You know, when you when you try to make a living at this, if color is what you do, is you only take warm fuzzy things or warm feathery things that's south. You know, and that's not what we're about. We're about taking pictures that depict <coughs> an area or a landscape. So what is wildlife? Uh, any animal with a backbone, go a biologist. I mean, that 95% of all life on Earth is not wildlife, you know. Okay, so it's Pali, the woodpeckers, it's uh, uh, soft shell turtles, it's river otters, you know, all those things. <coughs> and I guarantee you, all of these opportunities are share one characteristic. They are leaping. Okay, you don't get opportunities very often. So, leading, which means you're ready for when it happens. Oh, is turkey flying across? Oh, what? Oh, yeah. You know, black rat snake crawling down a tree after eating proprietary warmer babies. <laughs> Geese flying out. And, you know, those opportunities are leading. And you say, look, look at the sky. So in the photograph wildlife, there are techniques. One, sit and wait patiently in a blind. I know you, you've all read National Geographic and the guy said, I, I spent nine months sitting in the canopy of a blind for this one photo. Fine, you know, do I believe it? Yeah, I don't know if I believe it or not. How much time do you spend a blind? Quite a bit, but not that much. Not that much, you know. I, after about 10 minutes, I'm bored, okay? <laughs> Go where wildlife is acclimated to people. Okay, national parks, that's a good place. Over here, you know. You, if there wasn't so much hunting over here, they might be a little more acclimated, but you know. You go to Bosque del Trenche National Wildlife Area, you can walk right up to the cane, cranes of the snuggies, but they don't care. The, the preserve down 10 miles down the road where they hunt them, you can't get in a thousand yards of them. Go to Southern Illinois, the wildlife refuge is down. You can't get within a thousand yards of them because you hope you do this. <laughs> the birds go, oh, it's going to shoot me. You know, so <coughs> they go. So go work wildlife is acclimated. Not, not game parks, not camps. You know, you go to wildlife prey park and shoot wildlife all day, but where it's acclimated. Look at photo magazines. Where's 95% of all the photos taken? Out west in national park settings where the animals are acclimated. You can stalk your prey like a hunter. You, know, you can buy all that stuff that camouflages your camera. You know, you can dress in camo. You can skulk around through the woods. It's okay. You can do that. You can lie on a random chance. Walk around. That's my technique. Just walk around and say, oh, there's an opportunity. Or you can photograph captive animals. You can zoo, major centers, rehab facilities. That's a good place to practice. A really good place to practice. I brought a, some wildlife, wildlife today. We're going to practice on Mr. Black Vulture here. He's not going anywhere, you know. <laughs> okay, sit and wait patiently in a blind, okay? If you want to see prairie chickens in Illinois, you sit and wait patiently in a blind. You have to, you have to call down and make a reservation. <laughs> well, you know, if it's in March, Get there at 4 a.m. You sit there till 8 o'clock, and then you can leave. And stuff happens in front of you. Okay. It's one of the few times I've ever done it. There's a better option. Okay. We, we all came here in a photo blind today. What do we call them? Cars. Cars. You notice wildlife doesn't care about cars. That's why this the phenomenon of the road kill. They don't really care about cars. If you're driving along slowly, they don't care at all. They don't notice you at all. If you stop, they take notice of you. Unless you're a Kestrel. They notice, Kestrels notice cars. Yeah. <laughs> with most exceptions, hawks, if you stop a car with a hawk, it's going to fly away. So it's best to kind of keep moving slowly. If you're not driving, if you're driving, it's probably not a good idea to drive a photograph at the same time. <laughs> the other phenomenon is you stop and you roll down a window. No. You roll down a window and then you stop because they hear it. 
you're in the window beam, even if it's all the So have the window roll down, you know, stop, and then you'll have time. All right, these are all taken out of the car window. I mean, out of the car. Okay. The car makes a great tripod. If, if what? If you shut it off. If you don't, then it's a big vibrating mess, right? So shut the car off. Okay, these are all taken right out of the car window. And animals don't care. Okay? They really don't care. This was I got that picture later. You got the same picture? Yeah. Right? She didn't care. As long as you didn't get out of the car. She doesn't care. I know Mr. Ned is nested up there anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you also got to notice the, the, the important thing here is the plane of focus, you know. What did the camera want to focus on? The stick. Oh, you want to take a picture. If you had an auto, the camera's going to take a picture of that stick. You got to force it to photograph what you want to, and to see. The blind, the car is good. Is there anywhere in the Illinois where you can drive around in your car? And, and you know, it's spring late two weeks, so that's a good spot. Um, up and down, 136 is a good idea, or 97 is a good idea if you don't get killed. Banner Mark. Uh, there, there are all kinds of places. The best in Illinois that I found is, is in far southern Illinois called Mermaid Lake. It's a five mile. You know, no traffic, you drive whatever you want to do. All right. Go work. Wildlife is acclimated to people. A piece of cake. You know, this was in, if you want to go get a bison, you know, pretty hard to avoid. This is in Roosevelt National Park. You can't do that in the Wildlife Prairie Park, but there's a place in Kentucky that you can drive through the bison herd, you know, land between the lakes. Uh, prairie dogs, are, you go to prairie dog, wild prairie dog colonies on the high plains that aren't in national parks, you can't get within a thousand yards of the little devils because you ever, you ever read the back of hunting magazines? Come, nude ranch, vermin shooting. Okay? These are the vermin they're shooting, right? They see anything that's above, they're going to go. But in places like uh, Devil's Tower, you know, and national parks, Photograph prairie dogs all day. Cormorants, photograph cormorants out here. In Florida, uh, cormorants are easy because they're sitting everywhere. Right? Pelicans, you can get some nice oil covered ones now. They can't fly away then, you know, so they really are cats. Okay. Up in Minnesota, Good news is there were great gray owls everywhere. The bad news is minus 50 four degrees. And your camera says in the car, out the window of the car. It's a good option there because it's just, you know we didn't have. But if you get out of the car, it's flying away. Okay. All right. Stalk prey like a hunter. You stalk around your backyard. You know, like a fox squirrel. Bam, you got it. Do I do that? No. I, I try to wear well, drab clothes, you know. And, and just, yeah, there you go. No. But you can do that. And, and Yellowstone, you can you can sculpt through the grass, you know, you can get you can get elk or in, on the, the beach in, in Florida. What does sculpting around mean? It means not walking around like an upright human. Mm -hmm. They see this big thing, you know, and automatically they, they flee from it. If you're sitting on the sand or crawling on the sand, you know, this was this was at um, Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge, and we soon I were walking up the beach, and we kind of went too far. We went into we got into the nude beach kind of thing. So we were walking along, fully dressed, photographing birds, and turned around and like there was just little, like naked people walking. <laughs> so I took a picture of them, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, skulking. If you want to, you want to see uh, egrets and and herons roosting. Where do you go? 
nesting. We go to East St. Louis. There's a wonderful, wonderful heron rookery in East St. Louis, right across from the Arch, right next to a funky railroad yard in a horrible neighborhood. <laughs> and yet, there's hundreds and hundreds of eager nests, and, and they don't care, because you can, you can just walk up and down on the railroad, and, and they're 20, 30 feet away, okay? This is the same time up in Minnesota. This is a back, back woodpecker. And again, minus 40 degrees, you know, but opportunities. Rely on random chance. Here I am walking along a rock, and all of a sudden, there's an opportunity. <laughs> I know, there, are no, there are no great, great owls in Texas, although the field guide to the birds of Texas on its cover, that's a great, great owl. Obviously, the designer had no clue. <laughs> but I was tired, I was hot, I was hungry, I wasn't ready. Okay. Another thing is when you're walking in the field doing wildlife, and you've got, we're going to talk about carrying stuff in the field, and, you, and your camera's packed away in your bag. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's an option. Rip, spell show, pull it. No, it's gone. This is walk around. We were Trail Ridge Road. We were looking for white tailed ptarmigans, and all of a sudden I looked down and there's, oh, white tailed ptarmigans at our feet. So the first thing I did was sit down, right? And then I had to take off the telephoto because they were so close. But on 100 millimeters, you know, so you're ready. Marmots, soft marmots, they're curious. <laughs> Long eared owls in the winter. Not going anywhere. You gotta find them. Uh, short eared owls go to what's the mine? Uh, is it Huntington Mine? Somewhere in Indiana. Huntington Mine, south of Terry Hope. 50, 60, 70, 80, you drive around your car and go, you know, gotta find them. Mm -hmm. Captive animals. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, what's his name? I wasn't there. This is a, the, Owl at the U of I, uh, he's got a broken wing, they use it for rehab. Get an opportunity like that, take it. Who cares if it's a captive owl, you know? Take the best image. This is not a captive bird, but this is at a bird feeding station in the Aranda's National Wildlife Refuge. A bird feeder. You know? So this thing comes in, you just sit there and the birds come to you. What a great place to practice. All the, the hummingbird pictures from back here, and the Yapa Lodge in Ecuador. You just sat on the deck and all the hummingbirds came and messed with the flowers and you know went around. And captive animals, this, a colleague of mine had a family of white-footed mice which she were rearing, which she was rearing. And we made a little setup in the lab, you know. Last week we photographed leased shrews. Anybody ever got a photo of a leased shrew? Have you ever seen a leased shrew? Yeah. Well, <laughs> We made up a little setup, and now I've got dozens of photos of these shoes. That's something you can't do in a while. You simply can't do it. Maybe you did, but I. All right, various ways of treating wildlife. If you can't get close enough, use these same bullets, use, use good composition. You don't have to, everything doesn't have to be a portrait. It can be, Chachalaka. If you can't get close enough, Simply compose the best image that you can. Okay? Frogs, you know, this is a plains leopard frog. Get down to them. All right. And then we talked about static images. Well, they're all static images. We're, we're talking about 35 millimeter photography. What do you mean? What's the static versus dynamic? Static. Okay. Nothing wrong with it. We all know that frog's not going anywhere, right? What about that one? That one is going somewhere, you know? You can tell this one is not going to be around very long. Come back six months later, this one's still sitting. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you see those opportunities, you recognize them. Static? Dynamic, okay? <laughs> Either, either photo talks about bison, okay? 
okay? It's not an either or, it's a sequence of, it's like you make a sequence of drawings, you make studies, you make photographic studies also. Okay, work a subject, don't just settle for an image, okay? I don't like this photo because look at the eye. The eye is terrifying. Looking at it. Right? Oh, there's somebody there. This one's much better because, oh, yeah, you know, mellow. And you don't have to have the whole animal in it. It's not the same animal, of course. These are technically wildlife, but these were, these were courting uh, to crested beetles on sundew. Now, the good news is the beetles were so big the sundew had no effect on them. You know, sundew insect eating plants. But these guys were so big, it's kind of like a bison walking through a tank of twig. Now it's not going to. Same thing here. Look at the composition here. You, you actually got the lines. You know. Okay, same thing. Opportunities, 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 opportunities. And those weren't. Alright, blue here, great places for wallet.